Oh, you're a very good crowd. I didn't have to say anything. Everyone got very quiet. Good evening. It's great to see such a, a good turnout tonight on what threatened to be a cold and snowy night, but is actually a great night, and it's great to be here with you. My name is John McInerney. I am the Daniel W. Dietrich II Interim Director of the ICA, and on behalf of everyone here at the ICA, I'd like to welcome you to our institution. Uh, it's quite an honor to have Monument Lab here and to celebrate the publication of this book. I know you've worked um, long and hard on it with many of your collaborators who are here as well. So I will be very brief and then turn things over to Fritz, the dean. Um, one thing that uh, occurred to me when I was thinking about tonight was that we recently had a conversation at ICA. And 40 years ago, we had a show at ICA called Urban Encounters, Art, Architecture, and Audience. And there was a quote in the catalog that said, what is public art? The dialogue between citizens and artworks has been intrinsic to the life of every great city in history. Public art is not a style or a movement, but a compound social service based on the premise that public well-being is enhanced by the presence of large-scale artworks in public spaces. That's kind of a dated comment a little bit when I read it, um, thinking of uh, the context. I also noted that the catalog featured um, uh, 21 public artists, uh, of which only two were women, Jennifer Bartlett and Louise Nevelson. Um, I think we've come a tremendously long way since then, and I think really um, nothing more exemplifies that than Monument Lab and the work you've been able to do uh, to help us collectively redefine what public art means and what it means to everyone, not just to certain groups. Um, I hope that um, if not tonight, because I think the galleries are closed, but if you have a chance, we have two wonderful sculptors um, uh, that are gonna be at the ICA one right now, which is Michelle Lopez on the second floor. She's the head of the sculpture department at Penn. And then this um, spring, we will have Karen Olivier, a Monument Lab member, on her first uh, exhibition at ICA. And she also recently um, just received the commission, I'm sure it'll be mentioned later, to memorialize Dinah, the freed slave that saved Stenton House. So I feel like we've come a long way since 1980, and I think a lot of that credit is to uh, organizations and conversations created um, exactly like Monument Lab has done over the last five years. And so, um, I really want to thank them for everything they're doing to lead the charge to take a deeper and more meaningful look at what monuments, memorials, and public art can really mean to every citizen in every community that exists across the city. So with that, I'd like to welcome the Dean of the Weitzman School of Design, Fritz Steiner. Uh, thank you, John. Um, looking at that catalog from 1979 brings back many, many memories. Um, when I was a student here at that, that time, of course, the ICA was in Meyerson Hall before uh, it moved over here to this wonderful facility. And uh, as one of the great things about being a student at that time was um, the interaction with the uh, artists when they were in installing um, their exhibits. I remember you know, it often coincided with um, happy hour, which, um, meant for some interesting fundraising events by ICA, um, as well as interactions between the artists and, and uh, the graduate students, uh, including, I, my most memorable was sort of hanging out and having a beer uh, with Lori Anderson before uh, her, her exhibit. But that's, a, before I go down that rabbit hole, um, I uh, just want to thank John and his team for hosting this evening. Uh, and tonight we celebrate uh, the publication and the release of a wonderful new book, Monument Lab, Creative Speculations for Philadelphia. Uh, the book is co-edited by Paul Far uh, Farber, a senior research scholar at the Weitzman School of Design, and Ken Lum, our Marilyn Jordan Taylor presidential professor and chair of fine arts. Uh, it features artworks and writings by some of our greatest minds in the realm of public art, design, and the humanities. Among them, I'm proud to say, are Weitzman faculty uh, Sharon Hayes, uh, David Hart, Jane Gul Golden, Shira uh, Walensky, uh, as well as graduates like uh, 
Caitlin Pomerantz, and many more. What's more special about this moment is Monument Lab was born here at the classrooms at Penn. Conceived by Paul Farber and Ken Lum, it has grown exponentially with collaborative efforts of students, faculty, and staff uh, who've collaborated and uh, later on uh, fellow artists, educators, and civic partners like uh, Mural uh, Arts Philadelphia. I probably don't have to tell you, but Monument Lab is widely recognized as being on the forefront of public art discussion, scholarship, and community engagement. It's opened up uh, new possibilities for public art, history, and public space. It's become a guiding voice um, to cities that are reconsidering what it means to make public art. Uh, meanwhile, museums and universities are reimagining their own practices, collections, and relationships when it comes to socially engaged and contemporary art. The book, which is being launched tonight, is a collection, a reflection of this engaged artistic method. It is a record of a group of stellar artists and writers who are conceiving the ways we approach public art and reflects a web of civic uh, and scholarly relationships that made this possible. Uh, the book's release uh, also uh, marks a monumental milestone for the team behind Monument Lab. Uh, thanks to the support of Stuart Weitzman, among others, there is now a new home for Monument Lab's uh, team, teamwork at Penn. Uh, Paul Farber, Ken Lum, and Christina Giannato uh, are co-founders of the brand new Center for Public Art and Space, uh, which also we officially um, launch and celebrate tonight. The, the center will be an essential uh, platform for artistic research and civic engagement uh, at the University of Pennsylvania. It will support Penn faculty, students, and uh, staff in incubating public art projects and securing grant uh, base funding. It will advance the work of our exceptional uh, MFA students as artists and residents and will take on initiatives that bridge the campus and the public realm of in, here in Philadelphia and beyond. And last but not least, uh, the center will serve Penn as, the as a Penn hub for Monument Lab, the independent public art and uh, history studio based here in Philadelphia. Um, so here, we're here to congratulate uh, Paul, Ken, and Kristen, uh, but we're also mostly here to celebrate uh, the book, and I would be remiss without uh, uh, recognizing uh, Temple University Press, who did a superb job in publishing this book. Uh, so shout out to Temple University Press. We are now gonna hear uh, from uh, what Paul has defined as a fast-moving panel, <laughs> and he's underscored uh, fast-moving, so the idea is to get through the panel quickly and on to uh, eating some cake and celebrating the book. Uh, so we've assembled here a small group of Monument Lab artists, researchers, and collaborator. So I wanna th thank you, and thank you all for being here on this wonderful, um, December evening, um, and welcome to our evening's uh, fast-moving panel. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, people should come sit. There's so many seats up here. Is this on? Okay. I'm just waiting for some people to come sit because it seems like they should. There's Greta. Okay. Hi, I'm Lori Allen. This is very exciting. I wrote um, this little reflection on the train on the way here um, as in response to Paul's prompt. I've been thinking about it a lot, uh, but as I wrote it, 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 it seems a little bit hyperbolic. Um, I suspect it could use some editing. <laughs> Paul asked each of us to share a favorite memory or an insight into how Monument Lab fits into the larger moment or reflection on how it has impacted our work since we got involved. And so I'm going with how it has impacted my work. Um, and basically Monument Lab has entirely transformed my work and me. 
When I met Paul and Ken and got involved in Monument Lab, it was 2014. In May of that year, we did the discovery phase in the City Hall courtyard. But some months before that May, when Paul told me that he and Ken, what he and Ken were trying to accomplish, I thought, um, I don't know how to do that. But I can think of so many ways it could be done wrong or badly. Um, it, the idea of gathering people's ideas about monuments, um, having conversations about monuments and contemporary art in public space, um, I felt like at the time I didn't really know anything about art, but I was relatively cynical about people. Um, and I pretty strongly believed that most people were relatively cynical about art, um, and especially about an art project trying to do public engagement. I just, I, I just honestly, like I said, that's where I was coming from. And then the discovery phase just blew my mind. First of all, I, it seems silly to say this in this space because clearly you all already knew this, but I didn't, that art really works. Um, it, I didn't know. Um, I didn't know how it can open a space in the world for new ideas, for new feelings and experiences, how magically it can um, invite um, and turn people's minds and thoughts and feelings. Um, and then I saw the proposals, and I read and analyzed them, and I transcribed them with lots of help, and it turns out people are brilliant. Um, of course, I should have known, I should have been listening more attentively all along to how open and funny and complicated people are all over the place, to how many cool perspectives on the past and the present are just walking around on their way somewhere. But then the discovery phase was done. I'm probably over time. Okay, really quick. Discovery phase was done. We joined forces with Mural, with Mural Arts. Then the 2016 election happened and I got all cynical all over again. And I thought, we can't do this. First of all, just logistically, we cannot manage this at this scale. But secondly, who are we to do this? The world doesn't need a bunch of artwork right now. There's an emergency. But of course, it has been an emergency in this country for a long time. The time for reckoning with past injustices was very long overdue already. The time to face the complexities of our past was already long overdue. And whether I felt ready for it or not, we were doing that 2017 exhibition anyway. And it turns out that once again, my cynical mind was completely blown. Once again, by the proposals, of course. And also by the artwork, oh my gosh, I couldn't have known. Um, by the lab managers and the high school students and the determination of people in Philadelphia to own our city, our past and our future. Um, so this is what I wanna do now. Um, this is the work that I want to be doing. I want to try difficult things, to keep listening anew to people who've been calling for reckoning for a long time, and to seek inspiration from artists whose work opens worlds, um, and to keep using these technical and research skills that my full-time job um, helps me learn and refine. So that is how it has changed me. And now there's a book, so hopefully I won't forget again. So hi, I'm Jane Golden. I'm with the Mural Arts Program. So I'm gonna start out with my favorite memory and then try to go be speedy about how I think Monument Lab impacted the field and us, because it <laughs> impacted us a lot. So the favorite memory, I, there's so many, it was really hard to pick. But, so you have to understand the complexity of doing public art. It's like really, it's not for the faint of heart. So finally, after many sort of complicated things, the Afro pick arrives. And it was coming, then not coming, coming, then not coming. It involved the mayor's office and everybody else and like a thousand people. It was like a village. So then, so when it came, it was like this big moment. Remember? It was big. <laughs> so, and it was like this giant, like, oh my God, the Avro Pig's here. So then we had to like unwrap it and Hank's team was there. And this is such a quintessential Philly moment. So they're unwrapping it and people run up and start screaming about it. <laughs> Philly. So they're like, oh my God, I hate it. Oh my God, what is it? Oh my God, do you think that we're just about hair? What is this? And so Paul is super calm. Me, not so much. Because then I'm like, oh, everybody hates us. How'd this happen? Oh my God, I thought everybody would love this. How do we misjudge? And then my phone starts ringing and it's the mayor's office and it's Daryl Clark, you know, just insignificant people in the city. And then it's KYW wanting a statement. And then the fashion reporter for the Inquirer. I'm like, oh my God, how do all these people even know? 
And so, oh, and so Paul's still calm. So then 10 minutes goes by. I, I'm pacing around. And I think he's pacing too, but like in a positive way, right? It's like, Jane, everything's going to be good. So it's like then, like, I'm like, oh, my God, it's like the end of the world. So then I come back. And then I just say to the women who've been yelling at me, I'm like, look, please understand. This is like temporary public art. And they're like, it's temporary. And I'm like, yes. They said, well, why? And I'm like, <laughs> Well, it is. And they're like, but that's awful. I'm like, right. <laughs> and they're like, w-. I'm like, but you hated it. And they said, that was 10 minutes ago. <laughs> and I'm like, and they said, we love it. I'm like, well, that was fast. And then they said, oh, aren't you with mural arts? I'm like, yeah. And they said, oh, we're interested in art and education. I'm like, great, here's my card. And so then later in the day, I ran into the woman, and she was like, hey, Jane. So I'm like, yay. And my colleague said, who's that? I'm like, like my new best friend. So it's like, it just happened. The world just shifted. And that's what public art does. So that was my favorite memory, I think. But there's so many. Like Ursula saying her wonderful poem in front of Mel Chin's piece. Anyway, so then how did they impact the field? So Monument Lab, I want to just say, I think it was like, think of a light in the dark. And I think that when people thought of monuments, it was like a zero-sum game. It's like some have to go, and they're gone, and then there's that absence, right? But Monument Lab came along and said, no, there is something else. There is the temporal. There is dialogue. There's debate. There's discourse. There are ways of doing research. We can think of this differently. It does not have to be one thing or the other. They carved out the nuance, and I applaud them for that. And then the third thing I want to say is that Paul and Ken radically changed sort of my life and our life at Mural Arts. And so I think that when we started, it was like, do we have the appetite to do this? Is there enough mutual respect? Can we like each other? Can we take on work we've never done before? And the truth is that if you stay there in that point of disagreement, if you sort of veer back and away from challenge or risk, we all lose. And because we were able to rise and embrace it and go forward, we are all better and absolutely enriched. And I will be forever grateful to Ken and Paul. I also want to say that murals, like think about it, in 1988 working in churches and in people's living rooms, and like we were like the original social practice artists before there was a movement, before there was a label, before there was anything, right? But what we saw was this tremendous appetite for representation and people were right to want that. And that appetite has never diminished. And what Ken and Paul said is you do not have to run apart from monuments and memorials and all the other things that were deemed public art. It wasn't public art and then there were murals. It was all of us working in public space. And that brings me to public space because as public space increasingly across the country gets ceded to private interests, you see how excited I get, my papers start going everywhere. That's okay, thanks. Thank you. I don't know why I have all these notes. I'm speaking extemporaneously. Um, that, that we have to hold on to that and that notion of equity. And it reminds me of David Harvey's right to the city. And so what it has done in the end is reaffirm everything we're doing, that the lens that we see the world through is one that embraces aesthetics and will always embrace equity and access and opportunity. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, Hello, everyone. I'm Homei King. Um, I'm a professor of history of art at Bryn Mawr College, and my role in this project is really that of a bit player. I contributed an essay on Tanya Bruguero's Monument to New Immigrants, which you see on the cover of this beautiful book. Um, I first started to think about monuments in the city of Philadelphia when um, a friend of mine, the poet Jenna Osman, was working on a project that later became a book called Public Figures. Um, a book of poetry and photographs, um, photographs of um, statues, commemorative statues in the city of Philadelphia, and then effectively reverse shots of the eyeline of those statues, um, which we created using a kind of rigged up system on a pole and a camera on a timer, um, because the question was, what are these statues surveying? What is it that they see if we could look through their eyes? And in the process of doing that kind of informal inventory um, of the monuments that we have here in the city, we came to a very similar conclusion that Ken Lum does in his introduction in this book, uh, which is that the monuments here are very undiverse. (laughs) They're fairly homogenous. They're almost all military, um, many military equestrian kinds of statues. And as such, they have, I think, a very ideological function, which is not merely to commemorate these soldiers, but also to create an almost scarecrow-like effect for the public walking around. Um, 
that we keep this kind of internal soldier or policeman in our heads when we see these towering statues um, uh, surveying uh, the, the city streets around us. So that was um, my first kind of introduction to what we have here in the city. And I was very honored when uh, Ken and Paul invited me to contribute an essay about this work, um, Tanya Bergera's Monument to New Immigrants, which is in many ways the opposite of that kind of um, a statue or monument. It's, um, it's a child, it's, um, it's not an imposing figure. In fact, it's a very precarious, uh, vulnerable figure that decays over time with the weather. Um, and so I was very pleased to contribute that essay and um, I hope you'll enjoy it. It's, I also tried to put it into dialogue with a film I love called Statues Also Die by Alan Rene and Chris Marker. Um, and so this, the title of the essay is Statues Also Live. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Ursula Rucker. Uh, I think I have a unique uh, place up here because my uh, part of the Monument Lab project was a sound component. So I'm actually gonna be able to share a piece with you, which I would do even if they didn't give me permission to do it. <laughs> Um, yeah, when, I don't even remember how it all started. I just knew I didn't understand any of it. <laughs> In the beginning, I was like, what are we doing again? What did you want me to do? And you want me to look at 400 pages of research um, drawings and things that people think would be a good monument in Philadelphia and then use that information to inform the epic poem that I'm going to write to honor my most beloved city, my favorite city, my home. Um, okay, whatever you say, it's cool. It's gonna be on the roof of the library. Okay, it's whatever. I don't know what you're talking about, but let's do it. Um, any, any chance that I get to celebrate my city with all the bumps and bruises and, and bright spots, uh, any chance I get to work with Mural Arts, um, one of my favorite entities and, and uh, energies in the whole entire universe. And uh, now I get to be actual sibling type homie with Paul Farber. <laughs> And I have met the, yes, yes, it's, it, it warrants, it warrants uh, applause. And I've met the most amazing people, Justin Geller, Lori Allen, I mean, Ken, Dave, I mean, it's, it's, it's just like, there's a whole new community. Anyway, let me, uh, before Amy gets mad at me or whatever, and um, so I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna do the, the whole epic poem is 15 minutes long, so. I'm not gonna do that, don't worry. Uh, just do a piece that's like one of my favorite pieces um, called Ode to Philly. Uh, the project itself was called Logan Square. Ode to Philly, 40 speakers on the roof of the library in Mecca Ogba and Justin, I mean like you don't even understand what I'm saying. You would have had to experience it. But anyway, this is uh, an excerpt. Like a bell named Liberty, let freedom ring. Even though cracked, she still manages to sing. Her sound resonates both far and wide, demonstrates how to be broken but still have pride. Wedding pics on broad while Billy watches over. Head nods mean hello, misunderstood as cold shoulders. Don't ever make assumptions before you get to know us, cause this city sparkles bright, even in the darkest shadows, shadows, shadows. Like a bell named Liberty, let freedom ring. Even though cracked, she still manages to sing. Her sound resonates both far and wide, demonstrates how to be broken, but still have pride. 
The Declaration of Independence was signed here, plus cornbread was here, so we major. First zoo, first capital, first public library, first black church, we on that first type behavior. The architecture, the murals, the music, the water rice, we got all the best flavors. Proud to be from Philly, it's like second nature. Like a bell named Liberty, let freedom ring. Even though cracked, she still manages to sing. Her sound resonates both far and wide, demonstrates how to be broken, but still have pride. For our teams, our specialties, our royalty, our family. For our city, we go hard. These histories and legacies here run so deep, reach so far. Influence the nation with the songs and stories of our people. We unequal. We stand apart from four corners and creeks and rivers to structures and culture. We original, no sequel. From history to revelry and back up round the way. We love us. We love us. Like a bell named Liberty, let freedom ring. Like a bell named Liberty, let freedom ring. Even though cracked, she still manages to sing. Yay. Her sound resonates both far and wide, demonstrates. You still have your mic, Lori? Give, give Lori the mic. <laughs> demonstrates how to be broken, but still have. <laughs> Thank you, and uh, yeah, thanks for asking me to be a part. It changed my life. Thank you. Oh, that was great. So, Paul, it was your idea to go alphabetical. Yeah, so that put me... <laughs> S comes after R. Uh, so I just have one real simple personal anecdote to share with you. Um, I've been thinking and reading and writing about monuments longer than um, I think probably anybody on this panel and longer than I would care to admit to. Um, and so I've read a lot of books about monuments. A lot of them are real boring. Uh, some of them are good. Uh, but I, I've never read a book like this one here that we're celebrating tonight. And I had a reaction to it that I've never had to any other um, book, probably published by any, ac by any university press before. So I, I read it in proofs in the PDF stage, and I was just so profoundly moved and inspired by its combination of, uh, on the one hand, uh, amazing artistic creativity, and then on the other hand, this critical civic engagement with issues that really, really matter to us right now. Uh, and I was so moved by that that my first thought on reading the last page of that PDF was, what I need to do now is retire from my position, get early retirement from my position at the University of Pittsburgh and devote basically all my work life now to Monument Lab. So, uh, <laughs> uh, and <laughs> uh, then of course I realized that my son is still midway through the University of Pittsburgh on a tuition benefit, so it's gonna have to wait two years at least, Paul, uh, but, but uh, the dream is still there. But, so. Um, my name is Marisa, I'm an artist, I was an artist in Monument Lab, and for me, uh, I wanted to highlight uh, what I've learned or where I've, what I've 
what I got from Monument Lab. And I think my creative practice has changed um, significantly in that I now collaborate more, and so I wanted to highlight some of the collaboration. First off, it was very exciting to be asked to join Monument Lab by a senior, someone who was a senior when I was a freshman at Germantown Friends School. And so the first, the first, the first excitement was just being invited by a senior to do something cool. Um, and then to be recognized for work up to that point that had been done in, you know, alone, performance work that worked to intervene on public historic sites dressed as an enslaved woman. And, and that work had been very lonely and very trying for that, for you know obvious reasons. But I realized being invited to be a part of Monument Lab that I was working in Monument already, but that something about doing it with others was going to make it monumental. Um, so it was really exciting to get connected with um, Gabrielle Patterson, who had, who had proposed a monument for Wekako Playground, and who then became kind of my um, I don't know, assistant, but more often really pushing me to, to follow through with projects and follow through with big, kind of bizarre, obsessive ideas and see them to the end. She, a favorite moment was uh, the two of us trying to draw footprints in chalk in Wekako Playground at 2 a.m. to conjure this historical figure we didn't know anything about, but whose ghost we hoped would enter into the augmented uh, reality smartphone app through our animation gestures that we were going to do in this <laughs> playground in the middle of the night and kind of having a standoff, uh, one black lady against another about which direction these footprints should take in this playground, um, at which point people were kind of wandering through in the evening being like, are you two okay? <laughs> this is a playground. <laughs> um, and, and she connected me with the guys at Blue, Ben, Matt, Howard, who, who made the, the app come to life and made what seemed like um, performance happening alone in scary public places, made it really real and put it in people's hands. Um, and so the collaborations happened at every stage and they made the project bigger and bigger. They made performance, which was personal and done to rupture these sites around the country. It made that performance monumental. Um, and I'm excited to be in the book because uh, in the book is the map is the trigger for this smartphone augmented reality scavenger hunt. It's in there forever, um, as long as the internet doesn't break. And it's a kind of testament in a small way to the kind of monumental work you can, you can get done when working with other people and, and working with people with a huge vision and a belief in what you make. So I really appreciate being a part of this, both of you. Thank you, Marissa. I I'm Ken Lama, I'm white. Okay, next. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, times like this when you're told uh, there's a two minute constraint that I, I, I'm enormously uh, jealous of Jane Golden who can uh, deliver 15 minutes of speech within two minutes. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> just kidding. Um, I, I, ha I actually have two um, favorite memories. Uh, 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 one was, um, uh, well, the, fir I'll, 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 the first one, it's going to sound like a terrible bromance, uh, <laughs> but uh, w <laughs> a terrible one. No, it's a <laughs> terribly good one, I should say. And, uh, uh, I, and the way I remember it was Elaine Simon, who I see standing back there, professor of urban studies here at Penn, uh, recommended um, that I should meet Paul because I talked to Elaine about you know these these ideas that was kind of percolating about a negative history festival and all these uh, uh, surrounding uh, monuments and so on. And so uh, she said, you, you know, you, 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 uh, Paul Farber would be a kindred spirit. And then I remember it was a very sunny day, and, and uh, you came into my office and. This is going to turn into a real bromance now because the sunlight was hitting your face. <laughs> <So> <laughs> and I was in love. <laughs> because I said, because we had the most amazing conversation. Up and, and, we, and we went, we, we, I felt like certain kind of power, like we could, together we can really do something. You know, we could really make a difference. Because I was still quite new to the city. And so still, uh, you know, getting my legs, so to speak. And uh, you, were, you had just come back, and so there's a lot of parallels, and we we're both coincidentally teaching courses about monuments and, and uh, suppressed histories of statuaries and, 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 and that go into you know, uh, the for formulating of national narratives. 
and so on. So that's, that's one memory, it was, and, and it's an enduring one that uh, changed my life uh, uh, for, the, for the better enormously. Uh, the second memory uh, actually involves uh, Marissa because I was, uh, and Jane too, because it was at um, Washington Square Park. And, uh, and I had writ written this kind of fancy uh, speech, right? Because, you know, it's one, it's one of the uh, Dura-Gur things you have to do when you, when, when, to get a professorship at Penn. You have to be able to write a fancy word, word speech. And so I, <laughs> I had this fancy speech, and I, and I talked about, you know, the underbelly and all sorts of things like that. And then uh, I was followed by the uh, rep uh, representative from the Bricklayers Union, <laughs> right? And he came up, and the first thing he says, well, I... He, I have to affect an accent. He says, I, I, I don't understand. I'm not into big words. All right, that was following. <laughs> I don't know much about, you know, big words, and I can't write a fancy speech. But the one thing I do know, and it was regarding uh, Caitlin Pomerantz's work, which involved uh, re reconstituting uh, stoops. Uh, you know, a lot of masonry was involved, ex expertise by the Bricklayers Union. And he said, but I know bricks. <laughs> Right, and I remember just standing there going, oh, God, you know, like, this is, I'm not even worthy to be, <laughs> to be, be here <laughs> at that moment. And then he went on and on about how, you know, our union is go goes back to uh, the 1700s. And then he pointed to all the brick buildings uh, uh, surrounding Washington Square, and he said, all these buildings were built by my brothers and sisters, right? And at that moment, I remember having the, just the most profound uh, feeling about, wow, this is what this project's about. It's about all the kind of unacknowledged or not adequately acknowledged histories about this wonderful place called Philadelphia, and so on. And just very quickly, there's a, there, I, I've been thinking, what, what did Monument Lab bring that other projects on monuments have has not brought before? And, and, and it's actually very simple, right? One was public engagement in a true sense, where we don't underestimate at all the wisdom uh, furnished by uh, the widest public possible. And the second is also very obvious, which is speaking truth to power, right? And, uh, and, uh, and I, people say, wow, those are such great ideas you had. And, I, and I'm going, but those ideas are <laughs> aren't original. Those ideas you know, is, is something that requ is required of all citizens, especially at this time in the, in, in which, uh, in the crisis of the republic, that we speak truth to power. And, and that's what I think is the enduring uh, lessons for me of Monument Lab. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everybody who's here. Thank you to this amazing panel. Thank you to so many people who couldn't be here with us but were part of this journey. Um, you know, I think words of gratitude extend all around. Um, and before digging back into uh, a mutual uh, artistic bromance and <laughs> non-gendered other kinds of um, affinity, I want to just ask for people in this room if you had a part in producing Monument Lab, whether as an artist, a lab manager, someone who worked at the lab, someone who wrote in the catalog or helped produce it, or um, believe you were, because you were, would you just put your hand up now? <laughs> Some of the people who who raised their hands, and, and I know it by seeing you, um, were there at a moment when uh, we asked you to, out of respect and care for the work that you've been doing for a long time in monuments, in contemporary art, in public history. Um, some of you knew about Monument Lab projects. Some of you found out the day you arrived to speak at City Hall, <laughs> rain or shine. Um, you brought the rigor of lectures that could be given from a podium here at our university, um, or artwork that could be displayed in the galleries here, but you went a step further beyond, and you did that work outside. 
And I think a lot about this idea of theorizing public space, as we've talked a lot about while in public space. It's not always easy, it's not always pretty, but the meaning that comes from it is so profound. It will, it will change your life. It changed mine. I think back to um, the way that this project kind of took us, you know, and, and um, it started in classrooms. And um, as Ken was speaking, before we met, it was our students who were asking questions that did not have easy answers but needed to be said. And it wasn't that they were the first people to ask questions about anti-racist approaches to monuments or speaking truth to power. Um, but they were noticing in this moment um, about seven years ago that Black Lives Matter activists were calling attention to the connections between systems of power and injustice and symbols in public space. Feminist organizers, queer organizers, um, were sometimes finding ways to build monumental structures and other times they'd stand next to or gather next to a structure in public space to amplify their presence. Some of that work happened in museums and galleries and other work happened outside of artistic frameworks. And in seeing that from our students when we met, you know, I think we, we found each other, um, but we found a group of people, um, the Monument Lab team, um, which you know, includes an amazing group of people, um, Lori, Justin, Unique, Aaliyah, Steph, Matt, um, the, the names go on and on, but people who are in it for the purpose of engaging and also changing the narrative and the practice around monuments. And seeing where we are now seeing where we've been able to come with great support and care from Jane Golden, Caitlin Butler, others at Mural Arts, from partners here at Penn, in the design school, but across the university, and then many people outside of here. Whether or not you're credentialed by a degree, you're credentialed by what you know already about your city, what you bring to it. And because of that, our work has been able to continue and uh, for all of the moments where we have to push ourselves and respond to the urgency, there are moments like this tonight where we gather, we power up, we remember to not accept a status quo and we try to reinvent and we'll take this moment um, to amp up but also say thank you. Are we ready? We're ready. So here's what we're gonna do. We're ready, we've gone through the fast moving panel. Thank you to the panel, thank all of you. Uh, now's the time to launch the book and have the party. So there are copies of the book for sale, thanks to Penn Book Center. Um, there is food and drink and refreshment upstairs. Um, if you want to go back through memory lane, um, there's, an augment, uh, there's a virtual reality headset to take you back to a few of the monuments, thanks to Dave Takafandi and the Vital Media Lab. Um, and thank you, let's go party. <laughs>